Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you are all well. Today I am going to share with you how I made this table face and body moisturizer with Olivem 1000. Thanks to the ingredients used in this formula, this moisturizer does not leave any sopping effect on the skin when used. Those of you who have worked with Olivem 1000 will know that this beautiful emulsifier is always associated with a sopping effect in face and body creams and in moisturizers when used. After many attempts, I have finally succeeded in formulating a moisturizer with Olivem 1000 that does not produce a sopping effect on the skin. And I am very excited to share this formula with you. To formulate this face and body moisturizer, we need a glass beaker or a heat resistant container. I pour my distilled water into the beaker you can replace distilled water with rose water or any hydrosol of your choice. I add my chelating agent to the distilled water and mix till it dissolves. I am using sodium phytate as my chelating agent. In cosmetic formulation, metals promote oxidation reaction, affect the foaming properties of surfactants and can lead to discoloration. Chelating agents are ingredients that combine with these metal ions and play a crucial role in the stability and efficacy of cosmetics. Chelating agents are also often added to cosmetic formulations to enhance the effects of preservatives. They help to weaken bacteria, allowing cosmetic preservatives to work more efficiently. I have an upload on my Patreon page where I give a detailed explanation of how chelating agents work in cosmetics. When the sodium phytate is dissolved, I add the next ingredient, which is solar gum. Add the gum to the distilled water and mix until it dissolves. Solar gum is a blend of xanthan gum and acacia senegal gum, which dissolves quickly in water to form a non-sticky water-based gel with a pleasant skin feel. It is stable over a wide pH range from 3 to 12. In cosmetics, gums help to modify the viscosity and appearance of formulations, improve sensory properties, stabilize emulsions, suspend non-soluble ingredients, and modify the foaming properties of surfactant-based products. They also have film forming properties that help to maintain skin hydration. The next ingredient I add is vegetable glycerin. Glycerin is a moisturizing agent for creams and lotions and it helps to promote a pleasant soft skin feel. After adding in the glycerin, mix well so it blends with the rest of the ingredients. The next ingredient I add is fractionated coconut oil. Fractionated coconut oil is coconut oil which has had the long chain triglycerides removed, leaving the short and medium chain triglycerides to create a lightweight liquid oil. It is very versatile and can be used in balms and cleansing oils, wash off products, and in facial serums. It is a lightweight oil. It moisturizes dry skin without causing breakouts or greasiness. It absorbs quickly into the skin and also helps to form a protective barrier on the skin without clogging pores. The next ingredient I add is the Olivem 1000. Olivem 1000 is a complete self-thickening and natural emulsifying wax of vegetable origin for the production of oil in water emulsions. In lotions and creams, it acts as an all-in-one emulsifier and thickener. It offers a deep moisturizing effect with excellent spreading properties. We are able to make a one-face emulsion in this formulation because Olivem 1000 has the ability to dissolve in hot water. Normally, we would have the water face in a separate beaker and the oil face in a separate beaker. But thanks to this property of Olivem 1000, we are able to formulate a one face emulsion. After adding the Olivem 1000, I place the beaker in a double boiler and heat the mixture on low heat to about 70 degrees Celsius. As it heats up, I stir from time to time so that the heat is evenly distributed. When the Olivem 1000 has completely melted and the mixture looks milky as seen in this tutorial, remove the beaker from the water bath.
Then use a stick blender and mix for the mixture to homogenize. If possible, use a stick blender and not an electric hand mixer as this will determine the consistency of the final product. Here is a very good example. Here on my right is the exact formula as on my left. However, I was not able to achieve the same creamy texture as I did with the one on the left where I used a stick blender. You can clearly see the difference in the texture and consistency. After mixing with a stick blender for about 2 minutes, I mix with a spatula to control the consistency. It is still a bit watery, so I mix it again for a few seconds with the stick blender. Then I mix again with a spatula. From now on, I will continue to mix with the spatula taking a break every now and then until the mixture thickens. When the mixture has thickened and the temperature is around 40 degrees Celsius, I add in the heat sensitive ingredient, the vitamin E. Mix well so it blends with the rest of the ingredient. Vitamin E will act as an antioxidant, neutralizing the environmental factors that destroy collagen and cause fine lines and premature aging. Vitamin E is also used for its moisturizing and soothing properties. The next ingredient I add is the preservative. I use Liquid Jamal Plus as my preservative. Liquid Jamal Plus is a broad spectrum preservative and it is effective over a wide pH range of 3 to 8. It is ideal for water in oil and oil in water emulsions, creams and lotions, Make up and other highly pigmented products. This preservative is regulated in some countries. If you purchase your cosmetic ingredients from a reliable supplier, you should have access to all information about these restrictions, including the technical data sheet. After mixing in the preservative, the next ingredient I add is the fragrance. I use an allergy free perfume oil. Another advantage of fragrances is that they can be adapted to the needs of your customers. Mix well after adding the perfume oil. For the final stage, I use a hand whisk and mix to ensure that the added ingredients are well blended into the emulsion. The next step is to measure the pH value of the moisturizer. To obtain an accurate pH result, please always use a digital pH meter. As this moisturizer is thick, I mix 2 grams of it in 8 grams of distilled water. Then I dip my pH strip into the mixture for about 10 seconds. Take it out and see what the pH value is. As you can see, the pH value is 7. We need to lower it to between 5 and 5.5. To lower the pH value, I add a pinch of citric acid to the emulsion and mix well. I cannot emphasize enough how important pH value is in cosmetic formulations. The stability and performance of your product is greatly influenced by its pH. Many preservatives only work within a certain pH range and some active ingredients also require a specific pH range to be effective. If a product has a pH that is far outside the pH range of our skin, it can cause irritation, unless otherwise. So please be sure to measure the pH of your formulations. After mixing in the citric acid, I test the pH value again. The pH value is now around 5 and 5.5, which is perfect. I mix it one last time before transferring it into a clean sterilized container. You should moisturize at least twice a day after washing your face and every time you have had a shower. Moisturizers are designed to hydrate and support the skin barrier while softening and smoothing the skin. It is important to always moisturize the skin after it has been properly cleaned as you want to ensure that you are applying the product to a surface that is free of bacteria, makeup and other build-up.
as this moisturizer is not too thick, you can even store it in a pump jar as shown here in the tutorial. It is best to apply a moisturizer to damp skin as this helps to lock in moisture. When applied, moisturizers should leave the skin feeling hydrated, not greasy. As you can see, this moisturizer spreads beautifully on the skin without any soaping effect. The skin feels so smooth and soft after use. I must say, this is one of my favorite simple face and body moisturizers. It feels so luxurious on the skin. To determine the shelf life of this moisturizer, a 3 month stability test must be carried out. When I formulate products for personal use, I normally use a DIY method to determine the shelf life of the product. Whereby, of all the ingredients used in the formulation, the one with the shortest shelf life determines the shelf life of the product. Please remember to finish your skincare routine in the morning by applying sunscreen before leaving the house. Guys, we have come to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to give the video a like, leave a comment, share it, and subscribe to my channel. I wish you a wonderful day and look forward to sharing my next formula with you. Bye-bye and God bless you.